In my career, I remember being told, if you're doing this for the money, you're in the wrong job. While there is some truth to this statement, just how much can you earn as a motion designer? Now there is going to be some discrepancies here, but this is based on my experience in the UK. Now first off, let's talk a studio job. This is the path that most people go down and especially out of university. Now as a graduate or an entry level position, you can probably expect to earn between 18,000 and 24,000 pounds. Now this will fluctuate slightly depending on a variety of factors. The big one being whether you work in London or whether you're outside of London as the wages are usually a few thousand pounds higher there. Also, what skills do you have? Are you just a 2D motion designer? Are you a graphic designer? Or can you do 3D as well? Your own portfolio will matter and how good your skills actually are and how valuable you are as a person and then of course you have to think about whether you're working for a studio or an agency or an in-house team these will all make a difference to your wage now for reference my first studio job paid me 16 and a half thousand pounds per year which definitely isn't fantastic by any means. Now, if you get a few years experience, you can probably expect this wage to go up between £25,000 and £35,000. Again, this will depend on all the factors I previously mentioned. Now, as a senior, you'd probably expect to be in the range of £35,000 to £45,000. And obviously beyond this, you're looking at a director status, which will have some value and probably earn a bit more than this as well. Now, this might sound appealing to you, but it also might not. But I do definitely think there's a lot of benefits you can get as being part of a studio and working as a team that you wouldn't get, for instance, being as a freelancer. It really gives you a chance to get into commercial work and learn from people who are much better than you. You can soak up knowledge like a sponge and get instant feedback on your work, which is just invaluable. You don't have to search for a YouTube. You don't have to wait for replies on Discord. Someone there and then can tell you what's wrong with your project or how you can make things better. And that in itself is worth it, especially if you're looking to become a really good motion designer. Now let's talk about freelance. Now a lot of people make the jump to freelance after a few years in studio due to its flexibility and potential to earn more money. You have the option to choose what projects you want to work on and what hours you want to work as well, which sounds great. And if you really work at it, there is actually six figure motion designers out there. Now, my freelance experience is definitely different, but some of you may be able to relate to this. Now, when I was in uni, I did some freelance, shall we call it. And like most young professionals, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I had no idea about pricing. I had no idea about running a business. I had no idea how to get clients or even work in a professional workflow and environment. But as a uni student, 30 pounds for a couple hours work of something that I just enjoyed doing sounded fantastic. Fantastic. Now eventually this escalated into me and a few friends who actually decided to try it together and I remember at one point we were charging something ridiculous like £300 for a few days work and there was four of us. So the question is how are things priced as a freelancer and how do we earn more? Now if you are serious about freelance and you want to fully understand your goals, learn how to market yourself fully attract the clients you want to work for and ultimately build your dream, I would highly recommend you check out Client Quest by Motion Hatch. I recently had the pleasure of going through this course for myself and I can guarantee you it is packed with incredible information. Now, the good thing about this is you'll have access to a community of other freelancers just like you, as well as worksheets and templates to help get you on the path that you want to be on. Now you can check it out and support the channel as well by using my affiliate link in the description. It will give me a little kickback, so if you don't want to go that approach, you could just log on to the Motion Hatch website and find it there. So back to the question of exactly how do we earn more as a freelancer? And it sounds simple, but really we need to charge more or you need to offer a very niche skill set that people are willing to pay for. Now 3D is one of these more challenging areas that you could niche down on, particularly if you're a 3D Houdini artist, which really comes at a price. It makes you super specialized in one particular area, which helps separate you from the thousands of other motion designers out there. There's plenty of people who use After Effects, so what is it that separates you from them? Is it something in your skill set that you're really good at or is it perhaps your 
you're better at marketing yourself and perhaps you're a better people person. People could love to work with you just for the way you handle a project and communicate with them. It's not necessarily all your technical ability. Now generally in the UK, a 2D motion designer who is freelance will be charging around £250 to £350 a day. Now this is the minimum and if you're really specialised, you could probably see these prices going up to more around the £1,000 mark, which is definitely a lot but you need to be worth your weight in gold for that to happen. Being specialized in a certain area, like we mentioned, or perhaps being a really good director. Now to make more money, aside from selling the service, you could also sell digital products on the side. Now perhaps you're really good at scripting and generating code. So you could come up with your own plugin or After Effects script that help fills a gap in the market. AE Scripts offers a great marketplace that everyone knows where you can sell your own products. Perhaps it's 3D modeling, your practice and you're actually pretty good at. You could actually sell your models on something like TurboSquid, or you could even sell your After Effects project files or create templates for people and sell these through Gumroad, Payhip, or Envato Elements. Now you can see on my Gumroad, I've made 1,307 sales and generated $85 in revenue. Now this is massively skewed because the majority of my project files on here are actually free. However, one in particular is what I've sold for $4 and I've made 16 sales and that's generated me $66 in revenue. So a massive thank you to everyone who may have downloaded a project file and supported me and the channel as well. But you can see how this is a nice bit of extra income you could be making on top of your service. Now there's also the education side. At the end of the day, you have a valuable skill set that people want to learn and you could teach this through YouTube, you could teach it through Skillshare, or perhaps even sell a course. I do actually hate the stigma around selling courses because of these scammy TikTok, Amazon, FBA courses that everyone seems to do. There is actually some really valuable courses out there, particularly for motion designers. And I think they are well worth your money, especially with some of the feedback and value you can get out of them that can really help propel you in your career. However, if you're wanting to sell a course yourself, you will need some kind of traction. So you'll need to be either great at marketing or already have some kind of following, so it can be a bit of a problem. Now, while I can't specify what you can make on Skillshare or perhaps by selling a course, I can talk about the YouTube aspect. So let's take a look into my analytics. So if we look at my revenue here, you can see I've currently earned £139.85 and I've been monetized since the 13th of July. So around two months, which is about £70 a month. I mean, this has definitely grown recently. You can see when I first started, I got about a pound a day and then it started going up to more of a two pounds and then sometimes we're hitting five pounds a day right now, which is definitely some nice income. So again, thank you to everyone who watches my videos and enjoys the content. Now, the important thing to remember with YouTube is I've had my channel since January. So that was seven months of unmonetized videos. And then if you work out the amount of hours it takes to produce a video and then divide that amount of revenue by the amount of hours, it probably works out at like three pence an hour or something like that. I don't know the actual calculation, but if it's not something you actually enjoy, then I certainly wouldn't recommend it. You definitely have to enjoy the process for it to work. I definitely don't think it's this kind of get rich quick scheme that's always made out to be. At the end of the day, are you going to get filthy rich as a motion designer? Probably not. But time is money. And if you want to speed up your workflow, you can watch this video next.